Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is about Sony's FX6 and the audio capability of this camcorder. Before we start, I will not talk about the video quality of the FX6. I only talk in this video about the audio part on this camcorder. Okay, let's start with the mechanical setup of the FX6. The FX6 has the capability to record four channels of audio. And you have three different ways to get audio into your camcorder. The first is the internal mic, which is on top of the handle. The second is the MI shoe, which can send to the camcorder two channels of audio. And the third one is the XLR on the right side, which can handle line or microphone level. You can choose in the menu which input is used, but these all came in over the handle. So if you detach the handle, there is no way to get audio into your camcorder. Let's have a look on the left side of the camcorder. It's a typical setup for Sony camcorders. There's a small flap and behind you find two sections for channel one and channel two, and you can select automatic leveling or manual leveling. And if you select manual leveling, then you can change here the channel one and channel two. There is no way to manual level with a dial the channel three and four. This can be done only over the menu. But that's all. It's a little bit uh, less functionality than you have on an FX9, but the structure inside is more or less the same. If you like to use a radio mic system with the FX6, then Sony's UWD series is your best friend. There is a one channel receiver and a two channel receiver. It can be attached over the MI shoe to the camcorder and energy goes from the camcorder and powering the receiver and audio goes in a digital base from the receiver into the camcorder and can be routed to channel three and four. If you don't know how to set up a UWD series overall, then have a look in the description and click on the link. If you have a non-Sony radio mic system, then you have to use the XLR inputs to get the audio signal into the FX6. Before we have a look into the menu, let's talk about the audio signal. The FX6 is recording in 24-bit 48 kilohertz and also the con digital connection between the UWD series and the camcorder is a 48 kilohertz 24-bit connection. Signal noise variation is 80 dB typical or 90 dB with line input. It has, of course, 48 phantom, phantom power, so it works with, I would say, more or less every uh, phantom based shotgun you like to use. So it's a pretty good setup, which gives you up to four channels to record, which is really great for such a small camcorder. Let's have a look into the menu. The menu of the FX6 can be reached over the menu button on the left side of the camcorder, press it for a second and you get into the short menu or the quick menu, press it for longer than two seconds, then you get into the main menu. So here we are in the main menu and you can use the dial to come to the next point and there is the audio setup, which then guides you to the process of setting up the four channels. And of course you can choose the Input one is then internal mic or MI shoe, or the channel two is the same, which can be also then shoe uh, channel number two. And then you have channel number three, which has also the input uh, of the internal mic, the input one or the shoe number one. And the same is for channel four, which is input one, then input two, or the internal mic or the MI shoe. Reference input is the sensitivity of the mic input, which is standard on minus 50, which I think is a good setup. If you have a microphone which is low in sensitivity, then you can go down to minus 55 or 60. Um, so 60 or 70 or even minus 80, but this is only needed if you have a very, very uh, less sensitive mic overall. Input number two is the same, and then you have the line input reference, which is plus four. This can be changed also to EBU level or zero dB or minus three dB. Plus four is the standard setup, good enough for my point of view. Reference level minus 20, that's fine. Um, I would not change this as long you not working for a broadcast station, which definitely needs EBU level. Wind filter 
is something uh, we discussed this also in the video about the FX9, which I would not prefer to use because it, it will cut a lot of high frequencies from your signal if you don't have a nice um, wind jammer or wind filter in front of your mic then maybe you like to choose it and then we have level control for channel 3 and 4 which can be auto or manual and um, the same is then for the input level of channel 3 and channel 4 if you like to use it on the manual base or Audio input level is something like a master fader, can be stay with 99, I don't see any reason to change this. Limiter mode, this is a limiter which avoids you from over uh, driving your input section and uh, get some distortion. If you can leave it off, because there is the AGC mode, um, the automatic gain control for channel 1 and 2, 3 and 4. Because the AGC, the automatic gain control, cannot be switched off. It is on minus 6, so if your input level goes over minus 6 dB, another limiter, from my point of view, steps in and help you uh, to avoid your signal from any distortion. So if you have the chance, if the, there is no so crazy signal, then leave the limiter mode off and use the AGC with minus 6 or minus 9. That's, from my point of view, the best setup. 1 kilohertz tone and color bars, that's fine, it's off. And then is um, channel 1 um, audio input level or side level or both. You can leave it as it is, that's fine for all three, uh, for all four channels. And that's all what you can do on the audio input section. Going back and go to the output. And here is only the monitor channel, so the channels you like to control over your headphone output and the volume and there's some alarm level and of course you can choose which audio channels will be sent out over the HDMI output. To jump into the basic menu, give the menu button a short push and you have 10 pages where you can change things. It's similar uh, to the functions you can change in the main menu but here it's, the structure is a little bit different. So go on page number 3 this is the audio page, click the jog dial and um, you can change things uh, for every channel, like here on channel 3 and 4, so that is the auto or manual mode and the same thing is for channel 3 if you like, to auto and then you can jump to the different sources, which is again input 1, internal mic or shoe M1, and then for channel 2 it is the um, channel input 1, input 2, and internal mic and shoe number 2. I can choose this here and then you're ready to go. So let's say this is then shoe number 1. So we record at the moment the internal mic on channel 1 and, and channel 4, and on channel 2 and 3 we record the signal from the MI shoe in a digital version. So go to the next. Here you can change the reference level, which cannot be changed for the MI shoe signal or the internal mic. But if we go and choose here input number one, then of course you can change the reference level and wind filter, master fader. HDMI out, volume for your headphone or monitor. And here you have it. That's the FX6. It's a great camera. It's small, it's light, it's versatile. It's doing a great job together with the UWD series. And of course, you can record four channels of audio. If you like to record four channels of radio mic, then you can use the MI shoe with the Eurex PO3D, the two channel receiver from the UWD series. And you can use the cold shoe and the Minijig XLR cables, which are provided in the box of the PO3D, to get another two channels from radio mics into your camcorder. So overall, it's possible to record four channels of radio mics simultaneously with Sony's UWD series. Again, how to set up UWD series? Link in the description. And as always, if you like the video, thumbs up. If you don't like the video, thumbs down, that's okay. But write me in the comment field what I can do better, 
and what you'd like to see next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.